Sydney's sinking suburb. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about Spring Farm, a suburb in Sydney where portions of the ground, well, are settling unevenly. Looks like owners are now starting a class action lawsuit. This is just another issue that's, well, happening in Sydney with construction, New South Wales with construction. It's occurring all around Australia and, well, some of these things just happen. They're latent conditions. Maybe the way the ground was compacted wasn't sufficient. So let's have a look at some of the issues that are having here. You can see we've got settlement under the concrete driveway. Just, well, the ground settled much more than it should have. And you can often get issues with uneven settlement in buildings, particularly if you're compacting land. You know, if you're taking existing land and putting dirt on it to compact it. I remember there's one project I would drive past for years for years when I was going to school as a kid that all this land up there just this dirt there just to compact the land you can see here so you know there's some cases of the settlement just not working out near the driveway uh, a few other driveways here so the land is compacting some structural damage to some of the and cracking to some of the, the brickwork that's occurring on the house some you know cracking in the slabs really where's the, the you know you should have uh, saw cut joints in the slabs to allow for cracking at a certain space because it's always going to happen this there was one house completely demolished completely demolished because of the issues that were there but the developer has come and you know given the people rebuilt their entire driveway got it in got it sorted you're dealing with lend lease here so it's not a shonky shonky brand they've got their reputation to maintain so at least that's a good thing hopefully this will work out well for the people that are there we'll have to see so let's have a look at this article. It would be horrific. Berejiklian comments on Spring Farm class action. Yet another group of New South Wales homeowners is dealing with potentially worthless property after home sale, a home started sinking into the ground. Well, well, we'll see. We've just seen a driveway and a little bit of cracking on some brickwork. Yet another group of New South Wales homeowners is facing a lengthy legal battle after property started sinking into the ground. Residents in Spring Farm in Sydney's West last week filed a massive class action against the council and the company that developed the estate in New South Wales Supreme Court. The class action which encompasses all 3,500 people who bought in the estate regardless of if their house is sinking or not. Because there's some people that have got, had no issues with their house. But it, well, there'd have to be some brand damage, wouldn't it? Now, because uh, a bank will will lend depending on you know what suburb your house is in, what postcode it is in, that'll make a difference. And I wonder if that's going to make a difference here. Would you buy here, even if the house had no problems? So they're seeking tens of millions of dollars in damages. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian was today asked about the potential devastating future of many spring farm homeowner's face after having only bought into the new estate five years ago. I think it would be horrific for anyone who's invested in their family home, in their forever home, to have to find themselves in these circumstances. Berejiklian said, I wish them well. Well, see, only five years ago, and in some ways, they're in better off. They're in a better off situation than people buying in these towers because they're in a detached home, so their rights are a little different. First reported by the Daily Telegraph, it's believed the issues at Spring Farm were triggered after land was not filled and compacted properly before building started. Homes less than five, year or five years old have been cracking and falling apart as the squishy land underneath them shifts, with some residents saying their doors no longer close and others have witnessed their bricks cracking under the pressure. Well, we haven't seen bricks cracking. We've seen uh, the bonding of the bricks and the cement has delaminated so that's come apart i guess you could call that cracking you know oh what's going on here anyway meanwhile law firms behind the spring farms class action sent letters out to the neighborhoods this week despite some struggling with cracking houses many seem to be ignoring the class action with commenters on the spring farm facebook page today saying they have put the expression of interest letter in the bin. A home was built in 2009, and we see no major cracks to be concerned about. With age, cracks do appear, one wrote. 
I remember when we built, we were told not to build on standard M-class slabs because of the condition of the soil in the area. Most builders were forced to upgrade to a H-class slab. Well, that's the thing. If is it an issue with the developer or is it an issue with the builder? I mean, this this is going to get messy. This is going to get really messy. I know I'm spending a lot of money on, on my uh, construction under the ground. That's that's a big thing with regards to construction. It's just the soil and water. They're, they're your two enemies. Put it in a bin, in the bin. Been in the house, we built a year and seems fine. So far, we have an H slab, another said. However, other Spring Farm locals pointed out the long-standing issues with the suburb and the decades of sand mining that occurred there before it was gentrified. Pretty much all the houses are built on top of fill, as in sandstone, shale and clay. A lot of it has been excavated and still being excavated from the new tunnels being built. So they use new blocks as tip sites, one local said. Even though it's compacted, there will still be some small movement in the foundation. Our house has some small cracks here and there, but for this sort of letter to be sent out, some people must have, have serious problems in the area. Lead plaintiff, Danny uh, Musa, who paid 560000 for a house and land package at Springfield Farm, told the Daily Telegraph he was losing sleep at night due to lying in bed and hearing the tiles and gyp rock cracking. There's this stress of not knowing if the house is going to come down on what on you one day. Yeah, mate, it's come on. A bit of cracking and gyp rock and tiles is not the end of the world. It's going to settle and there'll be a bit of cracking and uh, I mean, OK, I guess I'm used to living in much older construction. You live in a hundred year old house when the doors, you know, I literally have to adjust uh, some of the the hinges on my doors when it rains too much just to get them open and closed. The noise I have to worry about is the possums getting in the roof. So he's been in his home for less than five years old. He said and his wife had spent more than $40,000 in attempts to repair the issues, but the problems have persisted. The area has a stigma. It's called Sink Farm, he said. Well, see, this is the problem, everyone. Now it's in the media and, well, I'm talking about it. I would be shocked if any of the viewers here are ever going to buy there. That's it. It gets a reputation. Spring Farm falls under the governance of Camden Council, with residents and builders who constructed houses in the estate now questioning how exactly the land was filled in. In a statement, Camden Council said it was yet to receive any formal notice of a class action and thus was unable to provide any comment or further information. Spring Farm was built on a former chicken farm and large swathes of industrial estate. A directions hearing for the class action will be heard in the New South Wales Supreme Court this Friday. Spring Farm owners battling similar issues to Jordan Springs. Spring Farm owners already have some legal precedent to support their court battle. Their class action follows a similar situation in Jordan Springs, near Penrith in Sydney's northwest, where homes started sinking. Property giant Len Lease, the developer behind Jordan Springs estate, offered to buy back up to 841 homes last year. Only around 90 homes were affected by the sinking, the developer said in December last year. However, it wanted to reassure residents. An investigation conducted by Penrith City Council found some homes had allegedly been built on landfill of low relative compaction and was subsiding. Based on our investigations and expert advice, we firmly believe the vast majority of properties aren't impacted by excessive sediment, which is localized in approximately 90 homes in the precincts Armory Road area, a spokesman for Len Lease told The Guardian. In response to Council's action, we proactively reassessed or reassured residents beyond the 90 we believe may be impacted that will support them in the unlikely event that their properties experience settlement issues beyond the requirements of the Australian standards. So there we have it, everyone. Another issue with settling buildings. So here's the question. What's the solution to this? If you're buying a, an existing house, I mean, these people, it looks like they bought the land and then they got, a, so they got a builder to build on it. If you're going there to buy a pro already constructed house from one of these people, would you get a soil test? I mean, you should already have a soil test and that should pick up a lot of the issues with the compaction that's going on there. And then your footing should be designed to deal with that. You'd hope. 
I mean, if you're going in there and buying a, an existing house, would you go and get a soil test done around the house? I think we did it for a building approval oh, to determine what we could construct, but it's not that something I guess it's common. Maybe it should be. You're talking 500 bucks. Why not? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.